500 years ago, he washed ashore the sole survivor of a shipwreck. And upon the skull of the man who killed his dad, he said, I'm mad, I must eradicate piracy, injustice and cruelty. And all my sons will follow me, so evildoers will believe that this man cannot die. G'day everyone, this is Expand the Phantom Podcast, episode 244, part B. Um, look, you know that our website's Chronicle Chamber, you can get in touch with us, chroniclechamber at gmail. Uh, dot com and all the rest of it you know the drill at the start of the show this is part b of an extremely long podcast and you want to hear about the international comics so uh thank you very much to our uh international reviewers mikhail lick um ankit mitra and suiza beer i really appreciate uh the contributions from you guys as we often say looking for someone from brazil so uh to, to help us out with the brazilian mythos comics um anyway not going to bother you for too much longer thanks very much for listening tuning in to 244 part b and uh, enjoy the rest of the pod. Time for another Phantom Review with me, Mikael. This time it's issue one and double issue two, three of 2023. Let's start off with issue number one. It has a cover in a painted style made by Rafael Ruiz. Uh, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Let's hope I was remotely close. And inside we have... Uh, some information about the croco creatures and then about what to expect in 2023. Just as last year, there will be a new Phantom story in each issue. We got some information about the side comics in the last issue of uh, the last year. And Team Phantom celebrates 60 years this year. We will get another soft cover book, Christmas album, and the reprinted hardcover yearbooks. Some uncertainties if it's going to be a new big book, such as the Heart of Darkness book we got last year. So good to hear that Fantoma will continue uh, with what in my mind is a good strategy, but uh, there's not any real big news there. The main story, the Croco migration, or Croco Island West, as it was called in original. Uh, it's written by Tony De Paul, and he revisits the Croco creatures. This time, it's Paul Ryan that does the art. The story. Uh, it's weird that it has not been published earlier in Sweden, since we have read many issues with the Saverna, and uh, also like the Croco creatures originates from a. Team Phantom and story. But yeah, that's how it is. We also get this, in my mind, really amazing uh, poster. We usually get a poster each uh, first issue of the year with the, with the program of when each issue will be in stores. But this time we also get like information and it's lots of treasures from the major treasure room. I think this was really really nice and after that we get a reprint it's the slavers team phantom and story maybe it's because it uh, maybe it got a peak in interest after the robert armand's book uh, yeah it's one of those 70 stories with uh, with the uh, yeah with janne lundström's script then we have some phantom fact and it's a very interesting article written by Andreas about Öskan Eralp. Uh, also, he was also sending scripts to Turkey and some of them was the same as we had in Sweden and some others uh, was different and uh, we haven't had them in Sweden so that's very interesting indeed. And he also ends with saying that we will be able to read one of these in Phantom and later this year. That is super exciting to me. Moving on to issue number two. Cover artists Salve Luto and Eugenio Maltosi. Again, with the pronouncing is hard. And uh, this main issue uh, main story of the issue is the first part of the six parts uh, that Pida has done for Fru with uh, together with Percy Oksha uh, the phantom goes to hell it was called in Fru 
here it's more like yeah it says that it's part one or six I enjoy Pidda's humor uh, in, in, in his phantom stories and uh, the, I mean the, the story is also good except it's not only the, the humor so that's great and I'm looking forward to reading the other parts during the year after this main story we get side comic the Libertalia it's the full second album and I was a bit confused when I was reading the part one and this one is it's also there's so many there's so many characters and it, I get I'm not sure but I mean it, it looks good and the story is holding on and and that's fine and it's gonna be cool to to read the the third part it's good that it's not one of those that goes on forever I, but, but I mean I, I I like the the idea of this pirate ha haven and I, I enjoyed this part better than the first maybe it's because the whole album is in one go here uh, after that what do we have more we get uh, information on how to vote on the best story of 2022 i've written an article about this on chronicle chambers ho homepage you should go and check that out and vote you can get these soft cover books as a win I think 2022 had a great variety of stories, like there was new Team Fantoma stories, there was unpublished newspaper stories, through stories, reprints. Yeah, and for me it was a handful of stories that was better than, than the rest, but I had no one clear winner. I, it was hard for me to, to decide actually. But uh, I think I voted for a story that a Swede wrote, but it was for through original originally which one you can guess and then uh, we have a reprint and the secret of polymos by don avnell and cesar spadari and uh, yeah it's black and white everyone knows how much i love black and white and uh, maybe not everyone but yeah um, i i wish we would color more but uh, it's a gr it's a good story uh, and i mean i usually don't like it when there's supernatural events but I'm not sure, but this time it, it works for me. Sometimes it does, and I'm not sure why, but yeah. And it's also the first time we see this, uh, let's see here, the Jungle Patrol uh, memorial thing. So that's cool. Monument. And uh, in the next issue we will see a new Team Fantoma story. Written by Philip Madden and art by Janus Orden. So Madden hasn't written a phantom story since the the one with the rainbow flag. Let's see if this one gets a, as much publicity and attention. And then we will get as a side comic the last album of Chris from Valnor from the Thorgal. And Thorgal is, has always been a big favorite of the side comics in Sweden. So looking forward to that. Thank you and happy phantoming. Hello and welcome to another one of Chronicle Chambers comic book reviews from India. I'm Shehu Zavir and today we are going to be reviewing uh, this big uh, Lion Mutu Comics uh, Phantom hardcover book from India. This is uh, number one which was published last year in January I believe. So uh, the second one is c coming out but it still hasn't reached me. So. Uh, so let's get um, started with the review. Before starting the review, I just want to talk about uh, uh, the publication itself, Lion Mutu Comics. So, uh, as you can see, uh, this comics uh, publisher, uh, Lion Mutu Comics, is based on the state of uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, it's uh, in South India. So, uh, the language there is uh, Tamil. And uh, that state, you know, they have had uh, many publishers publishing uh, Phantom Comics. Uh, importantly, Indrajal, uh, Indrajal published uh, Phantom Comics uh, in uh, Tamil language. But uh, it, after that, after Indrajal stopped publishing, uh, 
many publishers, uh, including two, I believe, including Mutu Comics, uh, which uh, we are talking about here, uh, published a Phantom. So, and after that, uh, another publication called Rani Comics took over. And I think most people have heard about them. So, uh, these are, uh, this is a issue of the old Mutu Comics, as you can see here. Okay. So the, this is the Mutu Comics. This is actually the last issue, Mutu Comics uh, 110. It was published in 1990, and after that, uh, if you serialize it, uh, this one is the next Phantom Comics in their chronology. Anyway, so uh, also uh, this one is a uh, uh, Prani Comics, as you can see. So yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about there. Uh, so a uh, the main purpose of that was that you know to show that uh, Tamil Nadu the state uh, had you know very good uh, publications of phantom comics uh, and now they are back uh, at it uh, publishing this uh, book and the next one which was released uh, very soon so let's get started with the review so now talking about the book uh, itself, uh, as you can see this book uh, is a hardcover book and of course the cover is uh, laminated and some spot UV has been used there. It looks very shiny you know, in the light like you can see here and it's a very great spine there and uh, in the back you, it gives an idea about what's in store for us inside the book. And of course, uh, you know, the cover itself. You know, uh, this is the cover of uh, the Kijil Maske number 16 published in 2014, I believe, uh, in uh, Turkey. And this cover is done by Itrugul Erdine. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. But, uh, so this is uh, the same cover. They have uh, used the same cover, used the same red colors which is interesting because uh, uh, we don't see the phantom in red colors in India I think sometimes we do see but uh, that is very rare occasion so it's very nice because they kept it because as you know the German weak comics they have used um, uh, the purple color instead of uh, the red they have repainted the covers with the artist's permission of course so yeah and that's very nice and the cover looks very nice and it, it makes it you know very intriguing so let's uh, look inside so the first face as you can see and uh, is a cyberi artwork I believe it, it was a moonstone cover of the their second series I don't know I don't. I currently can't remember the exact number of issue, but um, it it was from the second series, the Ghost Who Walks series, I believe. Anyway, so this was uh, this is again another Cyberi artwork. I believe this was a artwork by him, commission or whatever. Anyway, so uh, as you can see, this what is this? This is for free. This is a freebie. They have. Even this big, like huge poster, you can see, oh, wow, based on the cover. It's very nice, like very good production. It has the copyright information there with uh, KFS copyright. It's just amazing, like very great poster. It will look uh, great on whoever hangs on their wall, but I have not hung them. It, it's very nice, you know, it's a very nice poster. So, yeah, looks, you know, very, very nice from the first face. Then we go to there and another artwork and uh, some publishing information. And then uh, some uh, notes from the publisher about Lee Fogg and Cyberry and what not it's just you know they go through about you know, it's uh, how nice to you know bring the phantom back in the same language uh, publishers signature there so this book okay uh, and now we move forward to the stories as you can see so this book contains uh, uh, 
many leaf fork and cyberry stories so uh, we will go through them one by one I uh, think this is the Rex the missing air story by Lee Fogg and Barry and you know you can see this is a very nice uh, print of the original uh, story like you no know, it's very nicely printed with this kind of uh, paper it's not uh, glossy or anything but it's very nice paper like this is very thicker and it makes the book you know very nice and it, it makes the you know, panels like you know, look very nice and if you even can't read the language you, you, you just appreciate the work of you know Barry and it looks very nice you know it, it makes the uh, reading very pleasant I believe so yeah very nice so yeah uh, we continue with uh, the stories there as you can see the stories uh, yeah this is interesting uh, they have uh, ha have a poem about uh, <laughs> the phantom from uh, a, 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 you know someone So uh, let's move on to the next story, uh, which is, I believe, is the Jima the Rogue Elephant, and it is uh, written here as uh, Jumbo Pikol, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, they have you know a title page for each story, and it contains when it was pu first published in newspapers and also some trivia about uh, the phantom itself which is nice you know very very nice thing and yeah again very nice printing there it makes you appreciate the artwork you know in this black and white format very nice use of paper very nice like, you know, I, I can just go through the whole book but yeah it, it's the same here like you, you have the same thing again and again and again it's, it's, it's a very nice production and if you can read Tamil or you know just want to appreciate the work uh, if it is published in English some kind of this kind of a you know, hardcover collection of you know cyber stories if it's in English uh, that would be very nice I think you know it, it's a very nice production yeah I, I, yeah, so yeah, it's a very nice production again. It's a very nice. Only this advantage is that it is in Tamil. If it was in English, I mean, it's a very nice collection. Very, very nice. Again, in the end, we have some artwork there of Sal, Sal Valuto. Sal Valuto, and this one is by. I don't you know, recognize the artist's name. Some Bob. Uh, no, I don't. I don't understand. So again, cyber. And so that was the book. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very nice production. Uh, it's a very very good looking book, and uh, and I highly recommend it for a Phantom Collection. Mm, if you are a folk and cyber fan. You will know like the artwork in here, especially if you are, you know, Tamil speaking or Tamil understanding people. Anyway, so uh, that was the review for this uh, big uh, Lion Mutu comics uh, uh, from Phantom uh, hardcover book number one. The number two is. Uh, has already been released uh, but uh, I still haven't got it so I filmed uh, this review for the first one um, if you want to buy this book uh, I think you have to contact uh, Lion Mutu Comics uh, so there are some contact information there like uh, their website here yeah. so website uh, probably you have to contact them uh, 
Other than that, uh, yeah, it's a very nice production. I knew that already. And today we are going to be reviewing uh, this hardcover book, which is the Lion Mutu Comics uh, uh, Phantom Hardcover Book Number Two. Then uh, uh, number one uh, was reviewed uh, yesterday on Chronicle Chamber, and now I have got uh, the second one, which was released uh, this year. So yeah, uh, let's uh, get started with the review. So yeah, the uh, the book uh, is hardcover. Uh, the spine is great and then in the back we have uh, what to expect from the stories inside the book and the cover is also taken from uh, the Turkish Kijil Mask series uh, covers I believe it was number 7 by Ertuğrul Edirne and uh, it's interesting because this cover it's going to be used in the week comics uh, series from Germany in their 10th issue I believe so it's nice very nice yeah so it is uh, like laminated it's shiny very nice so let's uh, open the book and see what's in there so like, like last time there are some artworks there this is another artwork by Ertudul and uh, this is another artwork by the American artist uh, Norm Brayfoil, I think, uh, if I have not mispronounced the name. And uh, here is an artwork by Ed, uh, uh, Eugenio Metucci, I think. Yes. And some copyright information, publishing information, and then a uh, uh, note from the editor. I. Hmm, yeah, it, it basically talks about you know the second issue and all what they have in store for uh, in the second issue. So and uh, also promoting their next volumes in this uh, chronology of other characters they publish. Anyway, so uh, this is uh, the index of the stories which are in there, and this time they have included uh, ten stories. Uh, two of them are dailies, the last two of them are dailies, so yeah, that's interesting. So now, uh, this is a Sunday story, again, this story is, uh, I believe, uh, is uh, the, the Lions of Kukan, yes, the Lions of Kukan, and this story, um, yeah, like the other one, it contains the publishing information and also uh, you know what uh, would I say uh, the, a title page for the story so as a Sunday story they have printed it nicely not in color of course but yeah it, it still looks nice you know nicely printed uh, very nice so yeah let's just uh, flip through the pages this is a uh, Another Sunday story, I believe this one is uh, the Super Jet Gang. Yes, uh, also I forgot to mention this one, they have uh, included in every single one of them is uh, this, uh, this Cybery art uh, placing Bangala on the African map, I believe. Yeah, and uh, in the end, the first story we see another artwork by a drool. I didn't. Yeah. So let's just um, forward. Yeah, nicely printed again. The blacks are a bit much, I would say. Yes, because it's uh, like it's supposed to be in color now. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Again, another Sunday. Just, just you know, flip through. Looks nice. Very nice. Sundays after Sundays, then I got another Sunday. And this is the daily. Uh, this daily is, uh, I believe, uh, this one is Luaga's undercover tour. And uh, yeah, so yeah, the dailies look very nice in this format. Like the last book. Yes. 
So yeah, that was the book. And then we have another artwork by Saiveri. Then we have this by Antonio Lemos and a picture of Saiveri with his artwork. Very nice. And uh, this was the second book from Lion Mutu Comics. Yes, they are a very nice publication. But uh, as I told him before in the last review, that only the disadvantage is that you know, this book is in Tamil, but not in English. But yeah, it really you know is is a great way to you know, revisit some stories or get introduced to some stories in for the Tamil readers at least. Yeah, with a nice you know format. This book is. To purchase this book, I actually don't know how to purchase it uh, because I told uh, in the last review that you have to contact uh, you know, Lion Mutu Comics, their website, but the book is nowhere to be seen in their website. So I think you should, you know, what you should do is contact uh, Lion Mutu Comics on their Facebook or WhatsApp or uh, you can contact any uh, Phantom fans from Tamil Nadu or near it so that was it uh, that was my review for this uh, hardcover book I hope you enjoyed it and happy phantom I'm Ankit and today I'll be reviewing Regal Comics's uh, the phantom issue number 26 and 27 so firstly both these issues come with uh, like uh, the new thing from them and this is like uh, laminated covers so this is uh, the the book cover is on a much thicker stock paper and it's laminated and it's for both of them and so there has also been an upcharge in the pricing so it's 300 rupees now from the 200 per issue I guess and this freebies so the cover art has been done in uh, free cards with them as you can see here so let's start with the issue number 26. Uh, issue 26 has two stories, The Nomad and Shadows of Rune Noble, which uh, are by Tony DePaul and the artist is Edward Barreto and uh, the cover art has been done by me. And uh, there is a tribute art again uh, done by me for Edward Barreto because these are these two are the only two Sunday stories that he has and there is a small article about Eduardo Barreto and his work on the Phantom by Frank Borg who is a very renowned blogger and Phantom fan on the internet and uh, he has fantastic articles on his blog and everything and his website and other various social media handles go, go check him out he's known as the Phantom fan and yeah so here we have the stories in as usual they're sunday stories and uh as we know the first story near nomad was started off by paul ryan on art till about halfway through when eduardo barreto takes over the artwork here the transitions here and uh and 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 it's beautiful and and his work especially with his daughter Andrea's colors it's just amazing and it, it's just very sad that you know like his tenure was so short because the way he would outlay like this panel like the way he's broken this up it's just it's just incredible and he has such great lush like you know layouts for his thing he he captures fantastic views like if, if you read through it especially this one it's a work of art this layout how you know the, you you can literally see the central figures of what it is and the details on the villages are still there it's insane it, it, it just blows my mind thinking about you know speculating what could have been if eduardo's undoubtedly dead didn't happen and he's kept working on the phantom it, it's this is why i you know this issue so yeah so this is his last sunday page before he passed away unfortunately and so paul ryan was brought back for you know finishing at least two sundays before we had uh, terry bt taking over the sunday pages 
so yeah two stories check it out 56 pages and now comes a very special issue that way it is uh, the first uh, issue from regal and for a long time it you know uh, license english uh, sai barry's uh, stories are being published and they are all daily stories and they're done in a very different manner i'll get into it so this is the cover and i try to have both stories you know represented from this so as you can see like this mysterious passenger and this is from the vultures and this vultures cover is actually like a tribute to the indrajal cover of the original vulture story so you have the green background the v and it's it's like a remake ish kind of if you look at it so, so yeah now getting into the stories like i have an article here which explains uh, the reason for you know uh, why what we what was the approach for this book and why we chose to do two stories in two formats so i was uh, in I, I did the colors and some of the additional editing art for the first story uh, and uh, Ivan Pedersen uh, did the colors for the second story, The Vultures. So I, w I would recommend everybody, like whoever who buys the book, to really read through what I've written over here because uh, before jumping into any conclusions. So yeah, so the first story is a mysterious passenger, the tourist invasion. Starts off with a splash page we've done uh, introducing uh, the story and its details about when it was published and all. And uh, yeah, so. The colors are by me and some of the additional art and uh, the for some of the formatting I took from an online I guess it was a flu issue or something but I did make some changes uh, which I felt were necessary for the flow of the story and some parts where I felt like the narrative was a little thing and some of the art extra parts were you know the, uh, the way to just fill up the aspect ratio of it keeping the larger this is actually uh, done keeping in mind how all almost all yeah the phantom uh, publishers before this like uh, Indrajal diamond they they uh, they edited the stories way way more to fit aspect ratios or even increase page numbers uh, to move on to one issue to the other so yeah i uh, in terms of the coloring i tried to keep it uh, i tried to keep it like as uh, as simple as possible but also in ways so that it doesn't uh, look too dated like that there are reasons for like say like the blues and all and uh, the way towards the end when the climax comes in it's happening in a night scene in a fog so you know how, how the illumination and everything works and uh, yeah so for funny thing is like yeah, i showed these uh, colors on a podcast like actually i had a podcast with uh, not really, I, I would say a Zoom call with me, Germain from Chronicle Chamber and Mr. Saibari himself. And I had uh, shared my colors with him and everything just for his approval. And he made some very good points about it, which I did incorporate later on. And uh, so, yeah, he's probably, I guess, he's vetted my colors. So I'm quite happy with them that way. And it, it was a it was a lot of work. So, yeah, that's about it. So now we have the vultures which is colored by Ivan Pedersen. Now these uh, panels are exactly how it came in the strips. There is no uh, no edit for like you know fitting into different aspect ratios. So you can see that the panels are a little smaller because it's very difficult to like fit like in a comic uh, format you, when you put in you know the newspaper strips it just becomes a little more difficult to you know really put together as such. So yeah very well colored the usual Ivan's work how he and yeah it's one of my favorite stories too so yeah they are. so this in a way is a little uh, kind of a modern historical thing because uh, it's Saibari's work being published in India again in English and in all new colors which is not done before these are daily stories so yeah go check it out and today i'll be reviewing shakti comics issue number six of the phantom of the, which has the story the death from the sky now this issue uh, is has been released in english bengali and hindi languages and they come with a, a standard uh, 
cover and they have a which is basically this here the inked version of the standard cover and they and you can see them at the back here and they also and the english one has a variant cover which is done by me and i have that issue so i'll be reviewing that so as you can see it's uh it's now if you just to recap shakti has changed the size of their books and this is the size of their previous editions and this is the new size it's a huge difference and just to make a comparison this is the size of a regal book of a regal phantom and as you can see shakti is like the same width but slightly taller so yeah anyway back to the issue now the story is the death from the sky it's a daily story and if you see the presentation is really good inside this is the inside cover with the credits and here's an illustration of the phantom by Abhishek Biswas and another one and how the story like they make a splash panel to introduce the story and here it is so so in total it's, it, it's a long story and it's about a 53 54 page book with an advertisement at the back and an inked version of the main cover here and it, it's a solid as usual of shakti is known for its quality and it's a solid it's it's a laminated and uh what we call a perfect binding so it's like a glued binding and uh, there's a spot uv thing which for the back cover this image and also for the phantom here and the logos you can you can see it will catch the glaze here so yeah so it, it, it's, it's just it's really a really premium feeling book the pages are in glossy and very thick gloss paper and you can as you can see the print fidelity is fantastic so yeah as usual shakti has done a great work with the quality of the production and if we get issues like this uh, you you can understand so yeah, the price has increased because of this and i think uh, because of the variant cover it's 400 the standard edition is 350 so just about 50 rupees up charge for the variant but uh, yeah it's well worth it and go check it out happy phantoming all right well thank you very much for that guys much appreciated now um international it's absolutely international, the daily and the Sunday stories, and uh, it's re pretty exciting to be recording this uh, this weekend as we've seen the uh, the changeover. Um, and I, and I want to focus on the daily first, if I can, because we've seen the changeover of uh, of story of story titles. We're still in same this inside the same storyline for this this um, epic that we've seen unfolding in the daily stories with uh, the Phantom going to break Savannah out of Gravelines Prison. Uh, twice now he's done that um, through through the prophecies first, and now we've seen the um, the the actual rescue. But we've seen the end of the story, the breakout, and we're into the new story, Dr Dungeons Undone. So let's focus on the end of the breakout to begin with. Um, what did you guys think of the story? Uh, we we saw the the Bandar Nation come in to save the day but savannah still throwing grenades over her own back shoulder to i'm over her i'm over hey? her i'm over her <laughs> to bring the i was really annoyed at her for doing that <laughs> oh uh, when she went and you know, everything everyone was out nice and quiet and out it was going to be great and then she goes and blows up the bloody guard tower yeah oh, for crying out loud I'm over but, her. yeah well i was then this week started and you know, it's really become a, you know, the, the segue into the next story where we're not just going to break her out; we're mm. breaking everyone out. I'm, I'm, I'm back on board. Let's bring this. We, up. we made mention of that on this podcast. Is what about the others? Shouldn't the Phantom mm. be rescuing them? So I'm not sure if you remember talking about it, but um, I feel like we've been talking about this story for you know quite a while. But um, we made mention about that, and I was really happy when I saw that. I like Devil in this bit. We're flicking through it on um, on uh, YouTube. For those who are on audio, we're up to the end of December, uh, where basically Devil says, no, 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 hang back. Um, really like that. I like the band are coming. I really did. Yeah, I thought it was great. 
Um, of I course, like, they're because Diana, yeah. Diana's read the thing, and she's not mm. going to just sit back and let her let her um, fella die. Yeah, and the band aren't going to let it happen. Yeah, I liked Savannah as a character up until probably the end of last year. You know, like she just started annoying me. And ever since then, I'm totally off her. I'm happy for her never to be seen again. So hopefully she dies. <laughs> um, I must admit, I'm not quite sure if I'm comfortable with the band are killing Rodian guards. Okay, why not? I just, I don't know if it was necessary, but I guess it was in the sense that they're now breaking everyone out. But I just, you know, and I know the whole, you know, and I, I've had this discussion with quite a few fans, including those on the Comic Kingdom website uh, comment section as well, that, you know, this is war. And it's like, is it war? Is it really war? You know, should it really be war? Savannah's not exactly innocent. Should she be rescued? Should people be dying because of what she's doing? I'm just... And then you've also got the fact that the Phantom, the Banda, they're by where the borders lay. They're Bengalian citizens. In a sense, they're an army that's invading another country. I'm just... I just... I... You know, and I respect the heck out of Tony DePaul, and I love what he's doing. I'm just not quite sure I'm comfortable with the Phantom and an army invading another country. They're not invading a country. They're getting innocents out of prison. Yeah, but is that wrong, the Phantom? Wrongfully in prison. Is that the Phantom's job? Should the Phantom be doing that? Should the Phantom be... He's there. Why killing, not? Should the Phantom be killing people to do this? Who's he killing right now? Well, the got Savannah who's blowing up the thing. Yeah, but you've also got the band uh, are killing people as well. The band are around the Phantom. You said it's yeah, the Phantom. No, you I said, said the Phantom. No, I said the Phantom Banda. and them are killing. <laughs> so, you know, the Phantom's allowing it to happen. The Phantom's yeah, he's there. He's responsible for it to happen. Um, it's on his watch. The Phantom's just as guilty killing these people as Savannah and the Phantom. I'm... I like the fact that the Phantom is coming to rescue those people, but I'm uncomfortable with it at this stage. It's it's a tricky one because you've also got to be realistic and it's not, um, you know, well, I say you've got to be realistic. You don't because it's a comic book, but you, <laughs> the we want the Phantom to be realistic as a, as a comic strip um, and it, it's not realistic for this rescue to take place and the only casualties are a few blokes with who wake up with sore heads and concussions. There and you go. There's the phantom killing people. <laughs> so you're seeing the phantom killing people. Now, I can understand Terrace when he was trying to save Cardia's mum. I can live with that. And he was in a situation of kill or be killed, but he's had opportunities not to be in this situation. So Savannah took that away from him. He was on the way out yeah. not killing well, exactly as as has been said, Savannah's the one who um, brought the the attackers on, and now the Phantom's defending himself. I don't like seeing him kill people any any more than the next person, and and the way that I read that, I will um, interpret it as him wounding them, and they're falling over, and they'll lay down for a bit before they put the band on. Um, yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. Um, but it, but it, but she has brought it on. He hasn't sought out killing people. Yeah, but he's brought the situation on himself. Hmm. hmm. Well, anyway, it's his um, decision it, to be there. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, that's look. Yeah. I'm looking forward to having Tony Dupour on this podcast. Tony, I know you listen to these podcasts. I want you on because. I want to ask some of these questions, and I would, and I know you've addressed it in your in your um, on your website and, and stuff like that. But I would love to be able to uh, ask you on this podcast why you went down this path. Um, ask about Savannah. Ask about showing Phantom's eyes. There's a lot to unpack, um, and Tony doesn't do things by accident. He doesn't. 
And he said this before. He doesn't wake up and go, now, how can I mess with Phantom fans today? How can I ruin their lives? How can I ruin their character? He doesn't do that. He does things for a purpose. He's a deep thinker of the Phantom. And I would love to be able to get some of those thoughts. Oh, so. absolutely. And um, we <laughs> <laughs> it, I have no idea how long that will be, whether we should wait until the entire saga is over and we can go back over the whole thing, whether the saga will ever end um, or we're just rolling from, from situation to situation. So. I did like these. This and this is the end of the story, but I loved this turn, which uh, you talked about, just the, the artwork that went with it. Um, you know, I'm a teacher of democracy and fascism. And stuff like that. When I saw this, I'm like, yes, yes. We're getting to the next story. Absolutely. So Dungeons Undone has only been rolling for probably four or five days as we've as we record. Um, and largely uh, we've seen Diana um diana musing about her how she's come across the story and and we find out for a fact we you know we'd speculated but we find out for a fact this week that diana did indeed send the bandar um after after the phantom so you know in terms of oh is this army invading another nation well that that's on diana's order so do you um, reckon she got a uh, un um approval beforehand saying she does <laughs> work for the un <laughs> <laughs> she she certainly right, has to think it through. <laughs> but I guess, look, she is she's thinking about a man, you know, we all do silly things when we're in love. Um so, you know, look, I under look, I understand and maybe my words are a little bit to the extreme, but it is an army in an army of one country who is going into another country and killing those countries' citizens. So, you know, world wars have been fought for less. Yeah, but Rambo was a really cool movie, and you <laughs> were that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I made my point about that. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just want to make quickly, we missed one important fact. Um, about Rodia, which we talked about in our last podcast. Last podcast, we asked about Rodia if it was being, if it was an apartheid state. I'm not sure if you remember that. Um, mm -hmm. And how coloreds could have a job as a prison guard. Um, we actually chatted with Tony about this, and he said that the newspaper Rodia is a multi ethnic fascist, fasc fascist state. Uh, worth noting that um, the Phantom Inn was more like South Africa where coloreds wouldn't get important jobs like that. Uh, but it is also worth noting that in a Team Phantom Inn environment at least, um, that has been broken down with President Ndala, who's now the president of uh, Rhodia. So maybe fascism is still taking place even though he's... Nadala is um is his president. So um I just think it was worth making mention of that. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's uh, let's go to the Sunday. Now I, I and I'm taking this as verbatim because I read it on Facebook, but is this now the third longest running Sunday story? I believe we're up there. I don't have exact dates, but so it started in May last year. I know that much. So we're um, we're oh, nine months in. Um, I don't know what the longest Sunday story is as by, by point of comparison. But Return from of the Memory, Tem I think it's Return of the Thuggies from 1990, 91 or 92, around then. Okay. Okay. So, so we're up there anyway. So let's let's um, have a look at the last couple of months of uh, Return of the Temple of the Gods. Um, now we we know that this uh, this uh, setting of stories or this idea of stories um, started back in the newspapers. Team Phantom and explored them, and now they're back in the newspapers. And uh, we've put a whole video up um, before explaining the explaining the history of these uh, of these stories or the of the or the Temple of the Gods. Um, Tony DePaul does seem to be exploring it in a whole new way, I suppose, where he's talking about almost humans and, and non-humans and there's there seems to be all different stages of human development here. But basically, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in the last couple of months we've discovered that the 
the um, the alien woman um, has turned out to be able to speak English and um, is an almost human, not an alien, that sort of stuff. I mean, it's it's hard to know exactly where she's placed in evolution or and all the rest of it. But the so the so they they were created by um, by the pharaohs. Um, so, so yeah, so not, not alien, but they were created. And so you've got different, different beasts is what they were called back then have been created differently. So some look totally like beast men where others are almost human. And, and they've got this, uh, civilization underground that she's got to protect now because she's got yeah. a gun and can do that. Um, uh, yeah, do we sense now that Diana and Phantom are going to plunge back underground and go and meet these um, beasts? I, I must admit, I'm not really sure where we're going with this. If, if It kind of feels like there's, when she's talking about, you know, lesser human and, and, and stuff like that, I wonder if there's, a, if there's like a social aspect that Tony's kind of making or whether... Fans like per normal are uh, just reading a little bit more into it, but um, I'm intrigued where we're going with that. It feels like the first six months we were catching up to speed of what we haven't seen for six months for, for 15 years. Now we're, we're up to date with the whole lesser human and almost human different warring tribes. Uh, and in Team Phantom and Stories, they've explained how they have become mixed with the world so now i think we're actually going to get the story but i don't know where the story is going to go so maybe you're right that we are going to go underground again hmm. steve where do you think this is headed next uh we're going underground to do battle with the lesser humans yeah to protect um the almost humans uh civilization hmm no i'm with you yeah so and to rescue the the explorer so would the so the phantom will be on the lesser humans side, I guess. Oh um, no, on the almost human side because the oh no, yeah, sorry, the almost human side, yeah. Wouldn't yeah. he be just trying to make sure that no one else dies? I don't. I don't. Trying know. to keep keep the peace no. between the two. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? I'm really uh, put the plot to side one for one moment. I'm loving Jeff Weigel's art. I think the his Diana in some of these uh, is um, just a, a really beautiful, active, um, strong Diana character, and uh, I'm really loving the the depiction of that. And and the story has set it up for her to be able to be that character. Um, and Jeff Weigel's presenting her in that way. And, and look, I, you mentioned before about uh, taking Graham Nolan taking a while to to find his groove in the <clears throat> in the Phantom. Um, I think Jeff Weigel's found his groove in the Phantom a while ago and didn't didn't actually take long to find it. But gee, he's good. I really like his um, his artwork. Mm. Yeah, uh, there's been actually you make mention of Diana. Um, there's been a lot of fan comments on Comic Kingdom about. The way that he's drawn Diana as well, uh, a lot of appreciation for that as well. So, um, yeah, you're not you're not the only one who, who who thinks that. Going back to the question, are you actually enjoying the story? I, I look forward to it every Sunday. I'm keen to see what happens next. I guess by definition, that's enjoying. <laughs> yeah, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, same as uh, as Dan. Uh, it, it probably has taken a while now. That I've just been sitting here thinking about it. I think it's been going on for for quite some time. But it hasn't, like, the, I say, there's always something happening. Well, probably every couple of weeks we see the action sequence, I guess, mm. just to keep things ticking along. Mm. Just as long as we're not going to get for the next couple of weeks them travelling down to wherever they've got to <laughs> wherever they've we've got just spent, Yeah, we've just spent three months travelling up. We don't want another three months get there pretty quickly. Down. Yeah. Um, look, I didn't enjoy the original sagas. I'm. I wasn't excited when I realised this was being explored again. I'm more on the fence now than what I was at the start of the story, and I think 
It's turning you around, eh, Jim? Yeah, I think the, the care of the story and the artworks probably moved me out of the, oh, this again, to, okay, I'm on the fence and I'm willing to be entertained to see where this goes. So I think that's good in a sense. I think Tony's done a good job to move me from. Very good. All right. Well, I guess, um, as you say, moving on to the news, um, there's a whole bunch of news that's been happening in the phantom world. Um, and and as I sort of alluded to right at the start of this podcast, um, it's probably consumed us a little bit with the, the phantom game, and that's probably the reason why we've got a two-month uh, comics and news podcast now, not just a one-month, because um, January really was the month of the phantom game. Now, we're not going to go back over um, all of the stuff about the phantom video game today because there's not a lot more new since our podcast back in episode uh, 242. But, uh, look, if, you, if you're not across the Phantom game yet, make sure you go and listen to that or, or check it out on YouTube because um, it's, um, it's, it's probably the biggest news that, uh, that will come out this year, as we've said. Um, not much more to say other than we're excited about it and the, uh, the art clips and the, the sprite the animations that have come out um, are pretty exciting. Um, boys, any, not much more to add than that? Well, I think we've just got some uh, some breaking news. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, while we're doing the podcast, I actually just got a text um, that there's been some exciting development. Can't break it yet, but we will break it on a podcast soon. Um, so there will be some more coming out. All right. So, um, yeah, as we say, the video game can't wait to to see more about that, and the news is going to continue to drop all through the year. Um, so it's going to be a regular feature. Um, anyway, the uh, the other big thing that I suppose um, has happened in the last couple of months is that the Boss Fight Studio mini figurines have started to become available. Um, uh, not as available as we'd probably like, Jim. I know you're across um purchasing figurines from all over the world and um steve i know you've got some of the figurines or one of the figurines at one. least <laughs> one that you found in melbourne um i've got zero so steve can you can you maybe start by telling us how you came across um your little figurine and what you what what the, was the experience of buying a blind bag where you don't know what is inside oh there was a bit of anxiety a bit of nervousness i, I was really because i'm not much of a gambler but I had my, my youngest with me, Jeremy. We were going off to see the, the Harry Potter play. thought, oh, we've got time to pop in a Minotaur. I'm sure Minotaur would have these. Just, I just go, actually, I was looking for the, the Super Friend type um, figures. I thought Minotaur would have those. And um, couldn't find those. But then I saw the blind boxes. And, but for tw it was 20 odd bucks a, a, a pop. And I thought, oh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll get one. And, and Jeremy's going, I'll oh, get two. <laughs> I love that from kids. And it's, no, no, no. I'll, I'll just get the one and see how I go. And like the odds are pretty 50 50. Like half, the, there's five Flash Gordon types or Fla Flash mm. Gordon figurines or universe figurines, and there's five Phantom um, universe figurines. So I thought, oh, 50 50 choice. And I just picked a random one and I was looking forward to it. And we're, we've caught the tram. We're, we're on our way to the, to the theater. And I've got my, I got Jeremy to, to film me doing it just in case it's, you know, Diana or Devil or, or Phantom. And I open it up and it's a pretty cool Flash Gordon. But it ain't the Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then after the show, we had to go meet up with, with, um, uh, with Ange and Tom, my wife and eldest, and, um, kind of look at the time and think, oh, do we have, I think that the shop's still open. We've got time to, to pop in and Jeremy's going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 we don't. We're going to spend some money at Crown. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, dear. But so, um, I am going down to Melbourne in a couple of weeks, so hopefully they're going to. Well, hopefully people don't listen to this part of the podcast in Melbourne and, and rush down and buy them all out so they're not there when you when you arrive. I hope they <laughs> still have something of a supply. Jeremy, you've gone an alternate route to uh, – to try and make sure you do get a Phantom figure? Um, yeah, I just want to back on, Steve. Uh, you should have gone back because after you made mention of where they were, someone actually went in and just brought the whole box. So Yeah, he bought a whole box, but they had more than one box there. They had, oh, did they? They had a fair few boxes. Okay, all right. You might be lucky then. Uh, so what was, what was that shop again that was? That's Minotaur Min down in Burke yeah. Street. Uh, no, not Burke Street. Uh, little Collins Street. 
for those. Um, um, so just behind yeah. uh, Burke Street. Just south okay, so the reason why we make mention of that is because from what we've been able to gather and we've been talking to some comic book shops, some figurine shop owners, and also some other people who are in the know, uh, the mini PVC figurines will be very hard to find in Australia, which Dan made mention of before. Uh, we believe that uh, pop culture in Australia will be getting them in, that they may... that No so that they have ordered some in, but we're not sure how many because it's not going through their normal distribution channel. So if, say, for instance, Dan, your local comic book shop wants to order them in, you can't get them through the normal way you would normally do it. You would actually kind of have to get them directly through uh, boss fights, which probably means you won't get them, which means they'll probably become more expensive. Uh, Steve, you said 30 bucks, didn't you? For yours? It was just shy of 30. 20, 28, 29. 28, 20, 27, 28, something like that. So I brought mine from Big Bad Toy Store, which is an online worldwide thing. I brought two boxes. I brought one box for myself, another box for a fan over in WA where I live. Um, it basically worked out that each figurine, including ship, shipping, costed us, I think it was about 14 or $16. So it's about half price of what mm. you brought, Steve. But yeah, that makes it, me feel so much better. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, you have to buy a box of twenty, which is one hundred and eighty US. So it's a, mm. you know, it's a lot easier to dish out thirty dollars at a time than it is trying to explain the wife that you need to fork out because once you do shipping. It's close to three hundred dollars, or about three hundred dollars for a box of twenty. But in saying that, you get a box of twenty, you're guaranteed a set of ten, and you're going to have eight doubles. Which the chances are you're going to have three, four, five doubles of the Phantom as well, which you can then on sell for thirty dollars and get your money back as well. So that's what <laughs> I did. Um, Look, so I haven't found any other stores in Australia that are getting them. I've tried probably four or five. Um, Minotaur is probably the only place at the moment. So if you're in Melbourne, definitely get them. Mine are on their way. What we are planning on doing is doing a bit of a, a blind bag opening sequence with all 20, I guess. Uh, do a video, so that will be on YouTube as well. Um, in saying all of that, the Power Stars figurines will be easier to find. Because I believe well, it went that, that day. <laughs> yeah. I believe the issue that they had with the box of the mini PVCs is not going to be an issue with the Power Stars figurine. So that should be a lot easier for fans in Australia to find. Very good. Very good. Well, I haven't got any of them in any way, shape, or form. I'll be uh, watching this space to start paying forty-five dollars each for them on YouTube. <laughs> if my wife is listening. That means I got the set for twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we'll just we'll just cut out the bit where you said that we'll sell them on for thirty dollars, and we'll just say how <laughs> I paid fifteen, twenty, fifteen, sixteen dollars for mine, and then you can say, "Here, that's it. That's it. That's how much I paid." <laughs> Very good. All right. Something else that uh, hardcore collectors are going to be chasing down at the moment is the Charlton Companion book. Now, I say hardcore because, um, and, and you'll be able to fill us in, Jim, about what the, the whole concept of the book is, but my understanding is that there's, you know, it's one of those things that it, that might be 200 pages and there's three pages of the Phantom stuff in it. Is, is, is that, am I in the ballpark there? Yeah. So basically Charlton fans, we only know Charlton because they produced, you know, 30, 40 uh, Phantom comics. And for most Phantom fans, that's all they did. But they were actually a very popular, very wide-ranging. They did horror. They did romance. They did other stuff, westerns, Phantom adventures, King Features stories and all that. And they had a lot. They had Steve, They had uh, Rick Kirby, I think it was, Dick Goriander from a Phantom perspective. Um, Don Newton. Um, sorry, it's late. I'm trying to think. Various others, Aparo, uh, who are yeah. very well known 
creators, not just of phantom creators. And so this is a companion book where they look over the whole history of Charlton from like the early 1900s to when they folded, which was the late or the mid 70s, I believe, from memory. And so there's antidotes, well, there's like snippets about this artist who worked on the phantom and his mention is working on the phantom and they talk about that art, artist and they talk about this editor and stuff like that. So if you're a, you, you described it very well. If you're a hardcore fan fan and you want everything and you like the Charlton stories and you collect hardcover phantom related books, this is a must for probably 90% of phantom fans. You probably haven't even bothered even trying to justify purchasing it. Fair enough. All right, um, Steve, are you in the ninety percent or the hardcore group? Uh, ninety. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it took you that long to answer that one. <laughs> well, you caught me, caught me unaware that I was just looking at the cricket scores. <laughs> well, as uh, as late as it is for Jim, it's uh, a bit later than that for Steve. We're coming up to uh, it's no tomorrow. Price in your world so uh, we, we need to knock this out and and, and finish up um, let quickly the uh, if you're a 2023 subscriber for Fantaman, um there's a tote bag available that comes with those subscriptions Jim um, you'll you always look forward to the little free gifts that come with your uh, your overseas subscriptions yeah um, and look you get some amazing uh, freebies free has their file cards team Phantom Man have had uh, iPad covers, I've had towels, I've had tote bags, um, you know, the type of stuff that just sits in your phantom phantom room because you're definitely not going to use it and you'd have a heart attack if you saw your kids take it to school to use as a library bag or to take the, the towel, even though you've probably got three or four of them, they're never allowed to touch that towel. But um, look, yeah, if you... If you subscribe, you will get this tote bag. I haven't renewed mine yet, so I'll get it when I renew it. But, um, yeah, look, it's more phantom stuff to add to your addiction. Absolutely, and, and it does look pretty cool. If you've um, yeah. uh, been on ChroniclesChamber.com any time recently, you will have seen the uh, the pictures of those, and they're, and they're pretty cool-looking little bags. So not a bad little addition if you've got one. The other one, uh, and I guess this is, uh, I said hardcore fan of fans for the Charlton book. I guess we're talking probably in the same vein, if not um, the extreme hardcore phantom fans. If you're after the Hakon, and I'm going to get this wrong, I, I apologise, my friend, um, Hakon Arznes, um, has his 80th birthday recently. He's a, a phantom artist um, of some renown. The, uh, there's a, a celebration book that has been released um, looking back at his career, um, of which the phantom is a is a part. Um, uh, Jim, are you an extreme hardcore fan enough to be picking this book up? Um, out of the two, this would be the one I'll pick up. I'm a yeah, huge right. Hakon uh, fan. I've got a, a collage so he does these beautiful collages. If you look on, if you're, if you haven't seen it, go to our website or go to our show notes. Click on the link. Oh, I've included a couple of them. He does these amazing collages. A three. He's done some larger ones where he will get a story. So I chose the golden circle. Every you know that's quite well known. That's one of my more favourite uh, classic stories. And he'll do little stories and elements of. And of characters and do it as like a collage and it's in Wilson McCoy's style he uses the same uh, same colours as what Wilson McCoy would have used and they're amazing and they're beautiful and he's a huge uh, he's a huge Phantom fan uh, he grew up with Wilson McCoy's style um, he does these he still does the commissions I'm actually thinking about getting another one and then seeing if I can get the book at the same time and get him to sign it. That's where I'm kind of leaning towards at the moment. Um, but I've seen him do Phantom Goes to War, Lady Luck Pirates, um, Golden Circle, some of the, you know, Seahorse, some of these other stories. Um, he's also done some early Cyberry ones as well, uh, The Epidemic, which was quite nice as well. Um, but he's, he was also the first Norwegian to actually create an official licensed Disney story. So he's, he's a bit of a big shot in Norway. 
Um, and he's created like, I think it was like 440 stories or comics or, or something like that. So he's quite um, prolific. Very good, very good. Well, I um, I won't be picking that one, but that book up, but I will look forward to seeing, uh, hopefully, hopefully seeing a review on it on uh, Chronicle Chamber YouTube at some point down the track. So anyway, uh, look, uh, is, unless there's something else, something breaking that's come through in the last few minutes, I think we've Oops. come to the end of the news. Let's everyone check our phones. Yeah, no, let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, look, it, it has been, we, we said at the start, we were going to try and make it short and sharp, and you knew we were lying at the time because you could see how long it was. Um, but we didn't know. Uh, but it has been a bit of an epic podcast as we tried to cover a couple of months um, and and got bogged down as we, as we tend to do as we look at stories in particular because we just love the fandom. We love talking about the fandom. And uh, if you're still listening down now too, then you do too. So um, good, to, good to have you on board. Look, I, if I've you got could... a feeling that they may have listened over a couple of days rather than one hit <laughs> there, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that would... <laughs> I want to know That's... what goes longer, uh, a test match or his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the moment in India, it's the it's it's the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, if, if you as a listener have got any ideas um, for, for future podcasts, anything you want to hear us talk about, uh, or creators you'd like to hear us interview or, or go back and re-interview, please contact us. Um, you know that our website is chroniclechamber.com um, and that our email is chroniclechamber at gmail.com. We'd love to love to hear from you. Um, and, and as Germ has, uh, has included tonight, your your fan comments can, be, uh, can form part of the podcast as well. Look, if you want to be notified of any of the new articles, make sure that you're following us on the social medias or sign up on the website with your email address you'll be emailed as soon as something new is posted um, and uh, have that first insight there if you're keen on the the uh, the pre-insight if you like the very first before everyone else type stuff um, then jump on and become a patreon for uh, for the chronicle chamber patreon dot com slash chronicle chamber or something like that the links on the website anyway um we've been making sure that uh, our patrons have got early access to podcasts and and perhaps most excitingly at the moment and a huge thanks to ash nichols from art of play games giving us uh, the opportunity to provide our patrons with the very first look at any of the artwork that's coming out of uh out of the uh, the game before it even goes on on his website or their socials our patrons are seeing it so um now's the time to sign up and support us this next uh 18 months of as, as we sort of suggested is going to be a huge ride with the uh with the the game and the opportunity to see that stuff first up um we we didn't really mention it before guys but the artwork from the game are you enjoying what you're seeing so far from anthony spade the the animation um, you know, I think it looks pretty cool. Steve, what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I really am. Be careful, excited. I'm excited. Oh, I won't have a heart attack, but I'll, but yes, I'm over the moon. Little Steve excited. <laughs> little Steve. Oh, he is little Steve now. Um, <laughs> Two thirds Steve now. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I, the thing that I liked, and I've made mention of it on the socials, on the podcast, um, and I made mention of it with you, and I'm, anyone who will listen to me, I've made mention of it as well, is I like the fact that he's not overly muscular. He's not an overgrown Hulk-like American superhero. Um, I think some American creators uh, buff the Phantom up so much that it looks like he's in a, uh, a baby oil uh, Mr. Universe competition. That's not who the Phantom is. <laughs> um, you know, he's athletic, he's muscular, but he's not, you know, like a Mr. Universe, you know, covered in baby oil. Um, and then I like how <laughs> Anthony has brought that down where he's realistic. He's like a footballer. He's like a swimmer. Um, you know, not a, not a rugby league person or an AFL footballer. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's yeah, yeah. He's like that. He's someone who's got the strength of 10 Tigers that can run faster than lightning, that can chase down a deer, you know, which, again, goes back to all those stories that we've all grown up on and admired a long time. And he looks good, fun to play. Like, he looks like a, a, a perfect character to fill up your, your screen. Um, yeah. You know, looking at other side-scrolling beat-em-ups, it's, a, it's the character design that works. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah, you can just envisage that at the end of your uh, keypad, keypad or game board or whatever it is that people use. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks very much for listening, everybody. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or any of your favourite podcast apps, including iTunes or Spotify. We hope you enjoyed uh, listening to us. And uh, until next time, happy fandoming. Happy fandoming. Happy fandoming, everyone. Find the phantom. He finds.